Angel's Tears are one of my favorite Blood Angels units for Warhammer 30k, and I knew that I wanted to include a small unit of these marines in my slowly growing 9th Legion army. While Forge World does make official models for this unit, there are a couple of issues I have with them, not to mention that there's no official kit for one of the most potent weapons, the Elastis Pattern Assault Cannon. So of course, I got to work kitbashing my own. The base of my conversion is the newer Mark VI Plastic Marine Kit for the legs, with the torsos from the Blood Angels Plastic Sanguinary Guard Kit. For some reason though, Games Workshop decided to cut the Mark VI Plastic Kit differently than every other Firstborn Space Marine kit over the past 20 years. Because of this, some creative cutting is going to be needed in order to get the two kits to line up. This is not too difficult, I need to cut away both the front and back Mark VI torso below the belt. To make this a bit easier, I glued the back torso onto the legs so the butt armor wouldn't go flying when I cut the piece off, but you can of course cut and then glue later on. After the Mark VI torso was removed, I glued the two halves of the Sanguinary Guard torso together and attached them to the legs with a blob of green stuff. This might seem a bit imprecise, but I found that this is by far the easiest way to attach other torsos to the Mark VI legs, and as long as you don't use too much green stuff that starts to squeeze out the sides, there's not too much of a mess to clean up. Once I'm happy with the torso's position, I put the model down overnight for the green stuff to cure. It is pretty malleable still, continuing to build the rest of the model will just cause it to shift and it's more pain than it's worth. While the putty's curing though, I start to work on the head for these models. One of the defining features of the Angel's Tears unit is that they wear death mask shaped helmets to hide their identity, so I knew I had to get this part right. I end up using the death mask from the Sanguinary Guard kit though, as for some reason the sculpt of the official Forge World kit just doesn't do it for me. The one issue with these heads though is that they have this massive crest that I think looks a bit over the top for 30k. After removing it with my clippers, I use a sharp hobby knife to smooth down the cut. I also cut down and smooth out the back of the head where there's all this hair detailing for the original half masks, as I wanted these helmets to be, well, fully enclosed helmets. Before doing any more work on these, I mount them to a piece of cork using a paper clip, as I find it far easier to handle them when they have a handle instead of trying to sculpt this small little detail on the head while using my fat fingers to try to hold it. Because this head was a half mask originally, not a full helmet, the shape is a bit odd where I cut down the hair, so I needed to use some green stuff to bulk it out and to make sure it looked more like a full helmet than the half mask it originally was. This also helps to even out anywhere that was a little rough from my cutting. Once I'm happy with this green stuff work, I sit down the head for the night to cure. Just like before, I don't want to risk messing anything up when the petty's curing. One of the main design features on Space Marine Power Armor helmets is a centerline ridge vent that runs to the top of the head, and I knew I wanted to include this little detail in my version. So to make it, I just took a piece of 0.5mm by 1.5mm styrene and used super glue to attach it onto the top of the head. This is a bit finicky, but I take my time here to make sure it's lined up straight and in the right spot. I then trimmed the plastic to match the back of the collar, and sculpt two small additional pieces to the collar by using some rolls of green stuff that I then smushed down with my sculpting tool. Moving back to the torsos, once the putty is dry, I pull them off from the legs and then glue them back together. I do this because green stuff by itself is not really strong enough to hold the model together during gameplay but does work really well to make an almost well, custom plug, so there's plenty of surface area for the super glue to bond with. There is one more, well, very small issue here though, and that's that the Sanguinary Guard torsos are just a smidge smaller than the Mark VI torsos they were replacing, and as such, it doesn't look quite right. It's pretty easy to fix this though, by just bulking up the belt a bit with a roll of green stuff and squishing it down, much like I did on the helmets. As I'm sure many of you are aware, there are no plastic assault weapon arms for the Mark VI kit. But to get around this, I decided to just not worry about it too much, as all that really changes is the specific mark of the elbow pad, and I use whatever appropriately posed arms I could find in my bits box. I did have to cut a few up, like on the leader's arm to get the pose I wanted, but this was pretty easy to do. 
As mentioned before, as there's no official model for the handheld assault cannon that this squad can take, I needed to make my own. A lot of the conversions I have seen out there for 30k assault cannons involve just taking the barrel of an assault or rotor cannon and sticking them onto the front of the heavy bolter, but I want to do something a little bit different. Luckily, the assault cannon from the Dark Angels Ravenwing upgrade sprue fits perfectly with the plastic heavy bolter. This cowling here is even the exact right size to fit nicely on top of the heavy bolter magazine, and looks like it was meant to be a single piece as opposed to a kit bashed conversion. The first snip I did was to take off the barrel in front of the heavy bolter, using my clippers to get a flush cut against the drum magazine. I also cut away the back and the body of the assault cannon, so it's left with the cowling in the barrels as you see here. It might sound pretty obvious, but it's far easier to cut away plastic than add more material back in. So when I'm doing conversions such as this, I always try to be pretty conserved with my initial cuts and dry fit like crazy. This kit bash was no exception, and I originally cut off far less than I would need to. Which is good though, as I originally planned to try to put this in front of the heavy bolter barrel and add a piece of plastic tubing or something to extend it. But when doing my first dry fit, I found that this cowling here fits nicely above the magazine and looks really integrated. So I got out my clippers once again and cut away all of the plastic above the magazine and in front of the handle. Once I was happy with the rough fit, I took the back half of the heavy bolter and started cutting it down to size. I started off by snipping the front portion of it off, but then decided to glue it on before removing any other plastic, as this way I could better reproduce the cuts I already made in the front part. After that, it was really just a matter of constant scraping and dry fitting to ensure that the two pieces would fit together well. I probably went through 5 or 6 rounds of dry fitting and cutting away plastic, but I wanted to make sure that the two halves of the weapon looked good together. Overall, this was a fairly straightforward conversion, but I'm really happy with the results. For the rest of the members of the squad who weren't armed with assault cannons, I simply used the Falkite Serpentas from the old Forge World Mark 3 and 4 Close Combat Assault Upgrade Sprue. Of course, this squad would not be complete without their iconic jump packs, and for this I used a mixture of resin and plastic Mark 4 ones. You can of course just use the plastic ones that come with the Sanguine Guard kit though, just I used them already for other projects. After that, all that was really left was to do the Axe of Perdition on the Arch Erlem. This was a bit tricky though, as as far as I know, there is no official model for what an Axe of Perdition should look like. I figured the best way to make a weapon fancier though was just a stink board bling on it, so I started off by taking a Power Axe from the Vanguard Veterans Kit and added a Wing Blood Drop to it. These were done by taking this bit, which I believe is from the old Blood Angels Tactical Squad, and combining it with some wings from the Imperial Eagle decoration from the Rhino. I know these old Blood Angel bits are kind of hard to get a hold of these days, but you can either sculpt your own blood drop, or use the shoulder pads that come with the Sanguinary Guard kit to trim off the blood drops on them. There was some finicky cutting involved here, but by being patient and carefully cutting back the power axe, I was able to get these bits to line up nicely. To finish off this squad, I just added the left shoulder pad from the original Angel's Tear kit, and the right shoulder pad from the Emperor's Children Paladin Blade kits. I know it might be a bit heretical to use the Emperor's Children bits like this on a loyal Space Marine. I really like how the Baroque designs and the screaming faces of the Emperor's Children bits work for Blood Angels. Using these rather hard to find bits might seem a bit over the top, but you can absolutely use other shoulder pads such as the ones that come in the Sangrain Guard kit, but I'm addicted to ordering bits from Egghead Miniatures, and I actually already had these bits stashed away from a previous Emperor's Children project. I was in such a hurry to finish this squad off and actually show a completed and painted squad at the outro of one of my videos for the first time in a long, long time. I didn't record any other painting process for these guys. I used pretty much the exact same steps though as in my previous Blood Angels Metallic Red video, so you can check that out if you want to see how I did these, I'll put a link in the description down below. Overall, I'm really happy with how this squad turned out and I can't wait to get them on the table soon. To be honest though, I did cut a few corners in painting these as I was trying to get them done for this video, but I'll have to go back soon and touch them up to make them look, well, even better. As some of you might know, 
I've been running a series of polls on YouTube to help come up with ideas for my next project, a kill team from a custom space marine chapter. We've landed on a chapter who has been excommunicated from the Imperium due to dabbling in prescribed technology and is now just trying to survive in an uncaring galaxy. I'm really excited to see where this is going and I should be starting on the video this week, so make sure to check back if you're interested in following along. That's all I got for this video though, so as always, thanks for watching and hobby on.